thanks for joining me today. My name is Jo and I'm an independent Stamping Up demonstrator based in the UK. Um, today's my Monday mashup and I try and do a video for you when I can. Um, today we're going to be using some new products that are coming in the brand new catalogue. And I wanted to show you a couple of techniques today as well. So it's, it's a bit of a, a fun one. So this is the stamp set we're using. Um, this is called Quiet Meadow, but we're actually only using one of the greetings from here. What we're going to be using is the coordinating dies. So these are the dies here. As you can see, there's lots of different meadow flowers and things like that, um, which we're going to sort of colour up and I'll show you how they all come together. I thought it was just a nice way to show you some techniques using some alcohol, but also um, to show you how we can just use our dies sometimes because we've got such a lot of beautiful dies, um, which we use to cut out the stamped images but sometimes they work out standalone just really beautifully so I'm going to show you how to use those today so this is our card so it's going to be quite subtle um, in our background we can add some more to it if we wanted to we can build some depth into it but I wanted this one to be really quite subtle um, and then these flowers have been made through um, one of the techniques I'm going to show you so um, that's what we're going to be making it won't be exactly the same because you'll see with this particular technique um, they all do differ but you, you'll get the general idea and see how it comes together so the first thing we're going to need is um, our card base so this is a standard c6 card and this measures 21 by 14.85 and then uh, squad at 10 and a half to give us our card base I then have um, another piece of basic white, which is 9 by 13.35. And then a slightly smaller piece, which is 8.5 by 12.85. So they're going to mat a layer um, onto our card front once we're done. So I'm going to pop those all to one side for the moment, um, because we don't need those just yet. Um, you're also going to need some other pieces of um, just white cardstock. So this is going to what we're going to be using to cut out our um, our meadow. Um, and then I'm going to show you how to colour it. But we're going to do our backgrounds first, because that will give them an opportunity just to sort of dry up a little bit. So what I've got here is just a piece of normal acetate. So it's taken off the back of something, I think. Um, it's a piece that I just use um, for mixing colours, alcohols and things like that. So that's what we're going to be um, sort of creating our background on. I'm just going to bring in my um, smallest layer of white. So as you can see, it's roughly about the same width as this and obviously a little bit bit longer I'm leaving this longer just so it's easier for me to sort of lift it because it can be quite difficult to lift once we get started so what we need to do is to add some color to our base first of all so I'm going to be using our new ink colors today so we've got five new ink colors that we have every year um, these are the dark versions of all of these so these come in pairs um, so I've got the lighter versions um, that go with them. But we've got um, Evening Evergreen, Soft Succulent, Testing Me Now, Polished Pink, Fresh Freesia and Pale Papaya. So they're really, um, they all work so beautifully. You'll see I, I did some bits with them last week and they're just, the colours just all go really, really nicely together. But I thought again it would be a nice technique to use them with today. So the first thing we want to do is to create our background here. So you can use whatever colours you wanted, but I wanted it to be quite subtle. So you don't want anything too dark. So although I have used the pink, um, I've only used it in very small pieces. And in fact, most of it is hidden under there anyway. Um, but I just wanted that to be subtle so that the rest of it stood out. When we do this part, you'll see I, I went a bit darker. So we'll see what, what happens. So the first thing I want to do is to lay down some colour onto my base. So I'm just going to bring this in roughly so I know roughly how high I've got to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay down my lightest colour first because I don't want them to contaminate um, the lighter pen. And I'm just scribbling. Now you can see I'm not really taking any care over that at all. I'm literally just throwing down some colour. Now in all these gaps I'm going to come in with the fresh freesia. You'll see it will pick up some of the other colour and that's fine. 
they're all going to blend together eventually anyway. Okay, so as I said, I wanted to add a little bit of pink, but I didn't want to add too much. So just over the top, in certain areas, I'm just going to add a little bit of pink. So it's just to add a hint rather than um, one of the vibrant colours. So the next thing I've got is a spritzer. So this has got um, alcohol in it. So this is the um, isopropyl alcohol. This is quite a strong mix one. Um, you can buy it from um, sometimes from the chemists or you can certainly buy it online. It's, it's very readily available. I wouldn't recommend using your best gin. Um, but this is uh, just a normal spritzer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spritz the whole area. I need to work quite quickly, so I'm going to explain it to you just before I start. I'm going to almost saturate it for my background because I want my colours to really disperse. You'll see later we, we'll use a slightly different technique with it. So I'm just going to spritz. And I want to spritz until it's quite saturated and it's sort of running off the page a little bit okay and then once I'm ready and I'm quite happy with that I'm just going to lay my piece down so you can see it will start soaking that alcohol up now my pink is going to be a bit brighter than my original one but that's fine so if I lift this off and you can see that's where all the colors have started to to mix together so I'm going to leave that to one side that's going to dry just going to wipe any excess away okay so as I say that it almost goes transparent when it's when it's wet but when it's dry it will soften down and um, it won't be so transparent sometimes also the opposite sides are just as nice so it's kind of a we wait till it dries and then we'll have a look at it but what I want to create this time is I want to create some um, patterned paper effectively to that I'm going to be using to cut all my flower heads from. So all of these have been used using this same technique. Um, so the three colours I want to use is going to be the um, polished pink to start with. I will remember it. So I'm going to put quite a bit of the polished pink down because I want that to be quite vibrant this time. I'm going to be using a little bit of... I'm going to do my green separately, okay, so that we don't get too, too muddy. And then finally the papaya at the top. And again, you could mix these across if you wanted to, so you could do a bit of, a bit of both or a bit of each, wherever you want to. But this time, rather than use my spritzer, because I want it to be a little bit more controlled, I'm just going to pour some of this into the lid, or you can pour it into a little pot if you want to. Just be careful not to spill your pot. Famous last words. So the next thing I want to do is just to grab um, a brush. So I'm looking for any old brush, really, that um, I'm not too worried about. It's not going to hurt it. In fact, it will clean it because it's alcohol. Um, but any old brush will do. So I'm just going to dip my brush. You can see it's got some of the alcohol from previous. Dip it in here. And I'm just going to splash it onto my background. And again, I'm not being too careful about it. I just want to get some alcohol and I want these blobs because this is what's going to create our interest so this is just um, another piece of white card which I'm just going to pop on to here just to pick up that color okay so you can see you get lots of nice blobs and then I'm going to go back over so where all these colors are still on my sheet and I'm going to lay it down again. Just make sure you lay it down in sort of the same sort of direction if you want to keep it all the same colour. If you want to mix it up a bit, then I can do it the other way. So I'm going to do it again, just on these last little coloured bits. Now we'll just pop it up the other way this time so that we get a little bit of the colour transfer. 
Okay, so you can see I've got a really nice mix of colours. So this creates a beautiful background on its own, but of course um, it is quite vibrant. So um, it's not going to give you the same sort of um, effect that we want for our background. So there's two different ways to do it. There's numerous ways to do it. So you can do it with um, things like um, vellum. You can use bubble wrap to pick up the colour. Um, to blot over the background you can do all sorts of things so this is just one technique of many really okay so now that that's done um, obviously my desk is a little bit wet I'll just let that dry um, I love how all these sort of little bubbles and colours sort of all mix in with each other and I just think it, it makes them really really pretty and we can choose which bits we want to use but what I do need to do is to mix up a little bit of green I don't need a lot of green, so I'm not going to be doing a great, great deal. I'm just going to use the other side of this. And this time I'm using um, Evening Evergreen. So this is um, the dark one again. Still got a bit of alcohol on here, I can feel. And this is the soft succulent. It goes a bit patchy like that because I've got some other um, colours on there. I'm going to use the spritzer again this time. Okay, and I'm just going to grab another piece of card. Just going to pick it all up. Say so I don't use a great deal of this, so I don't need too much, but I just want to pick up the colour the best I can. Okay. So that's our actual backgrounds done. So the next thing I want to do, whilst these are dry, and I want to be able to cut out all my um, elements. So out of these dies, I'm going to use that one for the greeting a bit later. So I've actually used the vast majority of these but you can use whatever you want. I think that was the only long one I didn't use. And I did use one of these as well. And again, I didn't use the butterflies, so you can use whatever you want to. But these are the ones we're gonna be using. So the first thing I need to do is to cut them all out. Okay, so that's all our elements cut out. Now you can imagine these look beautiful as a silhouette on something, um, either in black or a white on white or something like that. It'd look really, really beautiful. Um, but obviously we're gonna be coloring ours today. So you can probably see I've used different tones of color. Now you could cut these out of cardstock if you wanted to. That would be absolutely fine. But I find by doing it this way, you get more tones into your actual finished piece which is what I was trying to achieve so um, it's entirely up to you if you want to um, just cut them out in the cardstock that's fine so there's no right or wrong way but this is just how I like to do them to get that texture in so I'm going to start off with the two um, and incidentally again you could colour a bit of cardstock if you wanted to um, a white cardstock in the green to start with and then cut it out but again you don't quite get that tonal effect that I'm looking for so there's various ways so this is soft succulent and this is evening evergreen okay so you can see that one's slightly darker than this one here I'm going to start with one at a time and I want to pick up some of the um, soft succulent and what I'm doing normally when we're blending we would do it in a sort of a bit of circular motion but what I want to do is actually just to stroke it across my finished piece it's a little bit delicate it's a little bit fiddly so what you don't want to be doing is rucking it up so just pick up some color and again where we're normally when we're blending we're trying to blend those colors together but this time we actually want there to be a sort of a mottled effect sometimes you have to give it a little wiggle okay so I've gone quite light on that so I'm going to pick up some of the dark now and what I want to do is just to pick up some of those side leaves and you'll find the ink will just sort of stick to the edges more than sort of all over so you get that lovely sort of tonal effect going on I'm gonna let that dry for a moment I might come back 
and add some more color depends on sort of where we are I'm just going to pick the rest of this ink up because I'm not going to waste that and what I'm going to do is I'm going to lightly just rub over the top so I've got a mixture of light and dark here so pop out those little bits So again, I'm just just sort of almost stroking it across. So again, I'm just going to grab some of the light. Now these are in the background, so I do want them to stand out a little bit. So I will add some more colour to them. And also to get some mottled, if you just tap it, you see you get like a like a texture across your leaves, which looks quite nice. So you can see that texture on there, but it just adds that little bit of interest to our leaves. I'm going to actually leave those ones, I think, as they are, because I quite like that effect on them. Again, I'm just going to pick up some of that colour, just so we don't waste it. Now what I want to do is to colour some of these. Now, obviously I'm not worried about the top section, um, but I'm just going to, sh again, just stroke it across the top. I want this one to be a little bit lighter, so I'm just going to stroke it until I'm happy with the, the colour. I'm not actually going to pick up any more ink off my pads. So that one's a little bit lighter and again this one I am going to pick up some more ink this time don't worry about it going over your flowers because we are going to um, be covering those you just want to make sure that it covers what green areas there should be If you want to add a little bit more dark in areas, you can. It's entirely up to you. Okay, and then my last one here. I'm not too worried about going from, from one to the other because um, most of the ink doesn't transfer anyway, so don't worry too much about that. Oops. Let's say just be be a little bit careful with them because they are reasonably fragile. Most of this is going to be hidden anyway, so don't worry too much if that happens. Okay, so I think I'm quite happy with those. I'm just going to pop my ink pads to one side and have a very quick wipe down okay so if this is our background so I want to choose one whatever side I prefer and also sort of how the design sort of uh, depicts how you want it up or down or, or whatever so I have a play on and have a look on both sides and I think this is actually the reverse, but I, I do actually like it because it's a little bit more subtle. Because once these are on, we want them to stand out. So I'm going to go for that side, so that's fine. So I'll pop that with my card so I know that that's the right way up. And now what I want to do is to start doing my flowers. So when you're making um, this background, have a play around, do three or four because you don't know where your colours are going to end up and then you can get some really, really nice effects on it. So I think this time I'm going to um, use the large flower, I'm going to be sort of using the pink. So I'm going to start with that one 
and I'm going to be popping this onto my piece just roughly where I want it to cut. And I'm going to pop that through my cutting machine like that. Okay, so it's better to do one of these at a time because then you can start building your picture up of how you want it to look. Okay, so that looks beautiful. So that's my main flower and this is my little sort of um, flower head. So they look really beautiful. I love the way that they've come out. So I'm happy with that one. I'm then going to, we don't need that one or that one anymore. So this is my other flower head and this time I'm going to go with a little bit of purple, I think. So I'm going to cut this one sort of here. If you're um, struggling to get them in your um, cutting machine the way they are, don't be afraid just to pop a bit off because we can use all these little bits for some other designs and stuff. Okay, so again, you can see how pretty they come out because you get all that sort of mottling um, going on. So we've done that one. And then this one here, um, it's sort of a mixture. So I might end up cutting two, but we'll see. I'm going to cut one here first. So this is our first one that I've cut. So I'm going to have a mixture of the purple and the pink. So again, they've come out very pretty. But I think what I'd like is to actually mix some yellow in. So I'm going to cut another one using some of the yellow side. Okay, so that is quite subtle, but I actually quite like that. And I think with a mixture, it'll look quite nice. So we'll, we'll have a play around when we get to it. And then um, the last little die that I want to use is that little oval here. And I want some of the um, power papaya. So that's all our little elements put together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the background in and we can start building up a bit of a picture of where we're going to go with these. So the first thing I want to do is to put aside the two green ones because I don't need those and then we're going to start on our little flowers here so this one here you just want to follow the line of the die so that it gives it that sort of shape and that is going to pop on top here okay I love that one that's really beautiful so if I just grab some glue now what I tend to do is to glue directly onto my flower rather than trying to hold the flower in place it's just a lot less messy and we'll do the same when we put the other bits and pieces on so I just want to line this up on top and I find just by holding it in your hands you can really sort of wiggle it to sort of get it into the right position okay and this is our little bud we've got here so again just follow the curve of the actual bud itself a little bit of glue and pop my flower on and again if you just pick it up it means that you can sort of squeeze it together so that you know that it's going to be in the right place. Okay, now I want to do the centre of this flower. Now this is quite subtle here. So as you can see, that kind of gets a little bit lost in there. So what I want to do is I want to add a little bit more colour. So I'm going to bring in actually my power papaya to start with and I'm going to colour on top of my coloured piece and then I'm going to bring in the dark one but what I want to do I'm just going to use some little sort of taps and that's the lighter one <laughs> so bring in the darker one I think that's not changing colour and I'm just adding some little dots on it really just just to um, it kind of builds up the layers quicker and you get that sort of contrast and go along that edge. Okay, 
so that looks a bit better so sometimes because the power papaya is so light sometimes it does get a little bit lost so you just need to go over that just a little bit which is absolutely fine and again I am just going to put a tiny bit of glue just where I know it's going to sit and pop the center of the flower on okay so that's our first one let's do this one here so again this is quite light so don't be afraid to go in and add some more darker color if you want to um, it's you know it's there for you to play with we are going to cover this part in a second with with a bit more green but as I say don't be afraid just to to go in with some of your alcohol pens if you want to add some detail onto it or make it darker in certain areas it's all about just having fun and just playing with the colors really I'm just doing some little extra highlights You might find if you did an, another background that you might get sort of some darker um, effects on it and that's absolutely fine so you know say so just just play until you're happy with with the result this fresh freesia is just such a lovely color and again remember this is alcohol so um, if you want to add more you can but you can also um, sort of dilute it down again if you want to a little bit it's it's a bit hit and miss you have to sort of play with it um, but I'm just looking for my alcohol squirter which is here and I'm just going to squirt a little bit onto my desk and my paintbrush that I had earlier I'm just now going to dab this and you'll find that the colours will then blend a bit more together so it gives that mottled effect again effectively okay so now that that's done I'm going to cut that in a second but that is going to sit on there you can see it's going to look really beautiful so I'm going to cut this bottom section off but what I also want to do is to cut this, um, the bottom of the actual flower, which um, I feel would be green, um, is what I'm going to cut next. So I've got my die and I've got the green that I did earlier. Okay, so you can see I've got my green there. What I am actually going to do is just to make it a little bit more tonal, just bring in the blending brush. On the base that's it it's just added a little bit more depth of color on there and then what I did for the top I kind of you can see it's like a, a sort of bulb so I followed the shape round as if it was a bulb but then what I actually did was I cut a V into kind of the top so it looked more like a tulip head almost, but it sort of that gave the better shape um, at the bottom of my flower. So I'm going to stick that on first. And again, just hold it. If you hold it up, then you can kind of get it in position I'm just going to round the bottom off again okay and then again I'm just going to stick the flower head on You can see how they start coming together they look really pretty and then finally we need to add our flowers to this one here 
I love this bud here. So I'm just going to round that off. And that is going to stick on there. Okay, so that's our flowers ready to go. What I need to do is, um, you don't need to, but I'm going to, I don't know if you can see, I've put a wink of Stella on all of those just to give them a really nice shimmer. I only did it on the flower heads, um, but I thought it was just sufficient just to give it that nice little shimmer. Add some little gems to these flower centers. Of course, you could color your gem centers if you wanted to. I liked them just clear. Okay, so now what we need to do is to start building up our picture. So what I did was I kind of laid them out before I started. Um, and then sort of I could see roughly where I wanted to go. And what I actually did was took a picture at this stage of where all my flowers were going to go. Um, so that I had a rough idea when I came back to it, sort of how they were all going to sort of sit together. So um, I'm going to do it the sort of kind of the same as I did the original so that you can see. But it obviously it will look a little bit different at times. So I started off with this one here and what I use is um, just some little dots of glue so I don't um, glue the whole back I just use some little dots of glue so some bits will be stuck down some bits won't and I like that because that gives that sort of that sort of 3d without being 3d Okay, so I did hang it off just slightly so it doesn't have to be exactly the same you're just building up a picture and this part will be covered under here or by the other stem so don't worry that that's a bit short okay so the next one I popped on was this one because again it's in the background so I wanted it to be um, the one at the back Okay, so then I, I stuck this one down next. So you can see this is going to be over here and we're going to trim off this end in a second. But what I did was actually added some dimensionals to the back of my flower. So I'm going to take some dimensionals just on the back of that main flower head and then I'm going to add a tiny piece to the back of the bud. So we're kind of using a bit of both. We're using some of it will be stuck flat, some of it will be um, on dimensionals. I'll just remove the back. So from about here, this is going to be stuck. And then the rest will be on dimensionals. So I'm popping this over here. And again, I'm just going to hang this over the edge slightly. Okay, so this one's next. And again, just kind of fiddle around with them and just sort of, um, you know, tuck some underneath it, each other. So it looks more natural, really. So what I want to do is sort of lift some of the leaves and pop them over the top. And can you see it will hide those ends then? That's that one done. And then finally this one here. So again, this is going to sort of go over and under. And what I did was I put um, a little bit of dimensional onto the single flower. 
so this one here just in the center and the rest is going to stick flat Oops. again just get it sort of where you want it and don't be afraid to sort of lift some of the leaves and things like that because it, it's all about nature they would be kind of in, intertwined so okay so now I've got these ends here I'm just going to trim those off because we're not talking about a bouquet we are talking about wild flowers so if I bring in the card and everything now you can see how it's going to start looking so pretty so the next thing I want to do is to do my greeting so this as I say is taken from quiet meadow and I'm going to be embossing it in white embossing powder um, onto a piece of polished pink okay and as I say this is the the beautiful dye we're going to be using so I'll just cut that through Okay, so this is going to stick on here. So what I did with the ribbon here, and incidentally, this is, is beautiful ribbon. This is available in all of the new in colours. It's got a sort of a satin edge with a sheer middle. Um, absolutely beautiful. So I'm just going to cut myself um, a couple of pieces. I don't need them very long. And what I did was I just wove them through that centre hole. And you just want to make sure that it sort of cups outwards like that so that it, it's going to hold on. Just do the other side. Okay, so again, I'm just taking my dimensionals and I'm just going to stick one at either end. I don't want to stick one in the middle because that's where all my um, stems are. So I want to just stick one either end and then that will support it in, in the middle section. So I'm going to take those off. Get it up the right way and just position my greeting. Okay, and then just going to take a piece of tape. Um, I'm using red tape because it's what's to hand, but you don't need to. You can just use any normal tape. And what I'm going to do is just I've folded those over, tucking them on the back, and then sticking it down. Okay. So now all we need to do is to um, mount it onto our front I'm not even going to bother taking the back off that um, tape because it's hidden um, and we don't need to okay so this is just being positioned onto my next layer and then finally just some glue So there we go so that is our finished card so as you can see they are slightly different because obviously the um, alcohol technique means that they are slightly um, they're always going to be slightly different you could use a mixture of, of colors so you could use um, totally different colors in the background to what you use for your flowers I wanted them to coordinate so that's kind of how I've done mine but you have a play these backgrounds are absolutely beautiful and you'll find that if you actually um, don't like them initially put them to one side come back to them because you'll find that they do grow on you but also you can use them for your sort of flower heads and things like that so if you don't like it in its entirety you can still use parts of it so don't throw them away so I hope you like that today. I hope you'll give it a go. Um, it's certainly a beautiful set. It will be available from the 4th of May. Um, if you'd like um, to order it, then you can just give me a, a shout and I'll be happy to do that for you. Um, alternatively, you could join and have it as part of your starter kit. And that would be a beautiful one to have um, in your starter kit. 
task but there you go have fun and i'll see you next week take care bye